nowadays people, especially digital marketers, are really naive about word of mouth and they think that this happens mostly online and they really neglect the reality which is offline marketing and personal word of mouth, interpersonal word of mouth, which doesn't happen online. If you stick to the end of this video, you will learn what percentage of word of mouth actually happens, not online, but in our offline real world. Hey, Budai Nation, welcome to this channel. I'm Daniel Budai and my team and I, we held more than 120 e-commerce companies in the past two years and we generated more than $35 million extra revenue. We hate boring ads. We don't want e-commerce business owners to spend on dual advertising. Today, I took three books to you that are my favorite books, my personal favorites about customer retention and also how to make your message stick in the head of your customers. So let's start with these three books and what I learned from these three. The very first book is from Tom Sia or Tom Sia, it depends how you pronounce his name. And uh, he's the founder of Zapos, a great company that was sold to Amazon uh, for $2 billion back in uh, 2009. Unfortunately, Tom is uh, already passed away a few years ago, I think around two, three years ago, there was a house fire and uh, he died there. Unfortunately, really sad story. But uh, his book is still here with us. And actually, I'm really glad to talk with uh, his uh, company um, that he founded. And hopefully they will be in our podcast as well. So what I learned from this book, this book is a really nice personal story about his uh, enterprises, about his businesses that he founded. And uh, he starts the book with his uh, childhood when he had an earthworm business. That was his very first business and it just lasted, you know, probably a few weeks because all of those earthworm they just disappeared. So that was a funny story. But he shares all of these funny stories. So he had a direct mail business. He had a pizza delivery business later, a very serious first business was a leak exchange that he founded in the late 90s in the dot-com bubble and he managed to sell it to Microsoft for uh, 200 million dollars which is amazing but he mentioned one thing there which is their culture was terrible because the company it grew so fast that the founders they didn't even know new hires and new employees and that was a huge problem and uh, he made a commitment that next time when he starts a company he won't make this mistake again a few years later he founded zapos he found out that e-commerce had been growing really fast and uh, footwear is a 40 billion dollar business in the us so he launched this new venture in the early 2000s and uh, he named it zapos but what i want to focus uh, here is a few rules that he left to us in his book number one it's okay to change your marketing strategy and it's really similar to changing the table in poker. And it doesn't matter how professional players you are surrounded with. If there are too many people in competition, even if they are beginners, overall your chance will be lower to win the game. So it's completely okay to change the table, change your strategy because, you know, you want to win. And uh, just like in poker, you have to smart about things when you want to win. So it's not enough to strive. It's not enough to being competitive, uh, but you also have to have a smart strategy. The next point is brand is important. If the brand is strong, people will come back even in rough times, even when there is a bear market. And I think now we are having a bear market actually. So the next one is make sure that your bankroll is large enough to the game you are playing. That's a really good one. So every industry has an entry barrier and you should make sure that you have the right amount of funds or you have investors or maybe you have some credits or you have a really good cash flow, but somehow you have to manage to survive even in the rough times. For example, Tom mentions this in the book that he had to sell his big house to save Zappos. And uh, I know Elon Musk, he did the same. So that's a quite common story when it comes to successful entrepreneurs. And uh, sometimes, you know, we have to make uh, rough decisions. What happens in the long term really matters. That's a good one as well. Always try to think long term. Cheaters never win in the long run. 
educate yourself. But what I really want to emphasize is the customer support because he talks a lot about it. So customer support is really the core of Zepos. And they think about customer support is that's like a sales team for an e-commerce company. And I know other e-commerce companies doing it very in a similar way. And all of them are really successful that I know. So customer support should be one of the core areas of your business. What he says, make sure your company's main priority is customer support. For example, Zappos, when they hire someone new, they put that person into the phone center to talk to customers for at least three, four weeks. And it doesn't matter if they will be a manager or they will, you know, if they will um, stay there as a customer support agent, they will become the CEO or whatever. They have to do it in the first few weeks because that's how they learn the mindset and, and the way of thinking of the customers. Trust your sales reps and customer agents, support agents. Situation rarely should escalate to supervisors. That's a really, really good one. Don't micromanage, trust them because I really like the psychological principle. People, they always try to come along, come, come along with other people. It's very rare that somebody doesn't try to do it by nature. So people, they usually try to uh, be compliant and, you know, uh, try to come along with other people. And that's why you should trust your customer support uh, agents. Don't use scripts. Don't try to upsell. Don't measure call times. Especially the last one, it's very common in uh, customer support. They measure the call time length. And if somebody can manage more um, complaints or more customers, let's say in one hour than the other person, then they are said to be more successful as a customer agent. But actually, that's not the correct measurement. What really matters is more like the satisfaction of the customers. And maybe, you know, it takes more time. So this whole thing, it shouldn't be measured by time, but more about satisfaction. Also, don't try to use scripts or, you know, use some gimmicks to, to try to upsell. It just doesn't make sense. It should happen naturally. View each call as an investment, not as an expense, which you try to minimize. Um, same spiel here. So don't try to measure the length of the calls of your customer support agent, but uh, it's rather an investment. And in the long run, this will come back to you. Wow experience. Every month, share wow experiences when someone was super thankful to your company. So it's always really important to share positive client feedback because this will really increase your team morale. So that's something that you should do regularly, maybe not just monthly, but I think every week you should do it. And uh, in my team, we also do it regularly. So this was the first book. And then the second book is Never Lose a Customer Again. The author is my good friend, Joey Coleman. Actually, he became a friend after I read this book. I posted his book on LinkedIn and he really liked it that, you know, I shared his name with other names like Tom Sia or the third book that you will see later. So Joey's book is uh, really about how to retain your customers. And uh, that's a huge problem nowadays. And he mentions that there are thousands and tens of thousands of books every year about sales and marketing, but probably just a few dozens or maybe hundreds of books about customer experience and how to keep them happy. So this really shows that, you know, the industry, it's a bit screwed when it comes to balance between the two areas. And he mentions that the most common problems of this, so what, what the impacts are, of low retention rate and you know not having returning customers. So first of all, the cost of acquisition is just wasted. Second, the overall profit decreases for the whole business, but also per customer. So you lose a lot of uh, profit because of this, because you cannot retain your customers. Also, thirdly, you just cannot sustain a business without returning customers. It's just impossible. I know the CEO of Decathlon, he told me once, that it's not worth to acquire a customer who will buy only once and will never come back. It's just a matter of time when you will bankrupt in that case. And fourth, the fourth thing, the last thing is low team morale. So, you know, I, I think I don't have to explain this. If uh, customers are not happy, it affects your whole team as well and they won't be happy either. One interesting stat, 5% increase in your customer retention can yield an extra 25 to 100% profit. And I really encourage everyone to really think about it. Like 
if you could retain 5% more customers or your customers, uh, they would stay with you 5% more time than what your profitability would be. It's really interesting to calculate, in my opinion. Joey, in the book, he mentions eight phases of the customer journey. Now, I won't really go deep into it, but the first one is assess, which is the marketing phase. And, uh, you know, when this happens, your potential customer hear about your brand and they really assess who you are, what you do, what your service or product is and uh, how uh, your product could help their lives. And then admit the sales phase. Uh, why admit? Because they admit that they are interested and they go to your website, they click the add to cart button and they are ready to buy. And then affirm when they make the purchase and the first moments after the purchase, that's a firm phase. I think this moment is really crucial. And the fourth phase as well, which is activate. So when the activation happens, you start sending out your emails, maybe your SMS text messages, and uh, you send them a thank you note as well. But the activate phase, they start going up on the ladder and they just spend money with you. So this is a crucial phase, how you can activate your new customers. The next one is acclimate when they really accom accommodate to you and they learn how you do things. They learn your brand language and uh, your company culture. It's both important for e-commerce and a service company. And then the next one is an accomplished stage when they receive the product or the service and they are, it's a big turning point again because they become either happy or sad or maybe just neutral, which actually doesn't help. So you should aim to make them really happy. So that's the accomplished phase. And then the last two are adopt when they take ownership of your of the relationship between you and them and they start really understanding each other and they advocate when they start giving you referrals and they become your VIP customers. And Joey, he mentions six ways to communicate with uh, these people and how to move them up on this ladder. You should use each six channels, email, phone, video, if possible, personal, probably this is the hardest for an online business, but you should still use it. And then physical mail, also delivering the product. And the last one is a gift, which can be either physical or not physical. So these are the six ways to communicate with, with these people. I highly recommend this book because it really pushes you to think about your customer journey, the different phases separately. He also mentions that you should create an emotional map or emotional customer journey map, how this whole happens uh, in your company with your customers. And it really pushes you to think about it and uh, how each step should look like, what are the communication phases and uh, what steps you could make. So I think uh, you become really conscious about your customer journey. So I highly recommend this book. So the third book is Contagious by Jonah Berger. And uh, this book is about why certain ideas, they are contagious and why other things that just doesn't stick into our mind. And basically this guy, he's really scientific about this topic. That's why I really like this because it's very tangible. So in his opinion, there are six ways to become contagious and really stick to the mind of people. And this is how you can retain your customers. And what he also says that uh, you don't have to have each of these six, but the more you have, the better. Some, you know, in some cases, the idea or the product has only one of these, but that's really strong. But in most cases, it has three, four, maybe five of them, but not all of them. And it's very rare that one uh, idea or product is very sticky because it has all the six ingredients. So the six rules that uh, make content or products or services contagious. The first one is social currency. People buy things that makes them look good in the eyes of others. This is a huge motivation in our society, status and uh, social currency. People make educated guesses about other people based on their fashion, clothing, cars, houses, where they go, what restaurants they choose, and all of these things. And uh, how we are looked by other people, it's really important for, uh, for most of us. The different ways to build social currency, there are three ways 
in his opinion. One is inner remarkability. For example, ants can lift 50 times of their body weight. This is a really sticky idea because, you know, it's just so surprising and so wonderful that this sticks to us. Second is uh, gamification. People really like gamification and uh, winning or, or, or gaining something from different games. And that's another way to build social currency. And the third way is making, making people feel like insiders, memberships, maybe becoming a VIP or an elite member that also builds social currency. So social currency is the first one, and this is probably the most elaborated in the book. The second one is triggers. So people, they mention 16 brands a day on the average. And if you really calculate this, then that's 3 billion mentions, brand mentions per day in the US only. What the author also mentions is that people, they think that uh, fascinating and surprising facts and products, they become viral because they really trigger people. In many cases, it's true. Movies or maybe surprising products or maybe food. Let's say McDonald's come out with a huge hamburger and it becomes viral. So yes, it's partly true. But The other big types, the big category of triggers is actually ongoing triggers, which are not really surprising or fascinating, but they come up every day because of their nature. So, for example, toothpaste or, for example, coffee. There is nothing fascinating about coffee, you know, but uh, it's just so common. We use it so much that we talk about this a lot or, uh, or certain food products. For example, oat flakes. So there is nothing fascinating about oat flakes, but if you like uh, one brand, then uh, maybe Cheerios, I don't know, uh, here in Europe, or maybe use uh, Colgate Toothpaste or Signal or Sensodyne or whatever, then you will talk about that. So there is nothing fascinating there, but it's still a trigger that we talk about regularly. The third important element is uh, emotions. So emotions are crucial. If you want something to stick, you should attach an emotion, a feeling to the thing, to the product or to the idea that uh, that is discussed. And uh, here the author mentions one important thing, which is these emotions shouldn't be neutral because it won't stick. The most important thing is to have something that is either very negative or very positive. You have to have a psychological arousal, as he says. So either you should create some anger or sadness or some extreme happiness or awe, maybe a big surprise, but definitely something that is not neutral because that won't stick. So that is the most important about emotions. Number four is uh, public, making things public and publicly visible. And the example in the book is the Apple logo because people can see it everywhere, it's easily recognizable. So when you create a product, make sure that the logo, the branding is publicly visible and it sticks to the mind of people. It's easy to recognize. And then the fifth is practical value. Probably I will talk the least about this because I think it really makes sense that people, you know, they share practical and valuable things with each other. So if something is really valuable, people share it with each other and it becomes contagious and viral. The last one is stories. So here the author talks about the caveman times because people, they don't think in uh, data or information, but what sticks to their mind is more about narratives and stories. Because back in the caveman times, people, they sat next to the fire or around the fire and they told stories. And this is how they learned. This is how they uh, gathered information and learn about different animals, people, and their environment, not by looking at numbers or just, you know, dry information. So stories can make things and products very sticky and contagious. Then this is how you can retain your customers. And also, if you want to learn more about another great, not author, but teacher and e-commerce business owner, Ezra Firestone, then make sure you check out this video. I think it will be somewhere around and you can click it. But we had a great interview with Ezra. Uh, We had an interview of more than 30 minutes and he shared a lot about his life and how he thinks about the business, why he wants to build a 100 million plus business in the next few years. So make sure you check out this video. Peace. So now 
you stuck to this video and let me tell you only 7%, only 7% of word of mouth activities actually happen online and the rest of it, it all happens personally in real life and not online, not on social media, not on Google, not on YouTube, whatever. So we still underestimate the importance of real life word of mouth, especially many of you who are digital marketers watching me. I think we all do that. So this is a big lesson for us. If you like this video, please make sure that you subscribe below, you hit the notification bell as well. So you get updated when I release a new video.